Good morning and welcome to week number 42 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. Now, I know I said this recipe was going to be simple and fast, and those are definitely two truths. Uh, simple because there's not a lot of ingredients, fast because, well, this shouldn't take more than an hour, but it's a little on the complicated side. Um, so, you know what, I'll explain in a minute. Grab your ingredients and let's bake. Is this recipe easy? Yes and no. You have to be incredibly particular about this recipe. Anytime you're making any kind of baked good that doesn't require the use of flour, it can get a little dicey. If you have a food scale, you need to use it. And you know, throughout this last year, I've used my scale quite a bit. Some recipes I just dump and pray. Um, other recipes, I'm pretty precise. This one, I'm breaking out the scale for, for everything, including the egg whites. So keep that in mind. Let me look and see the list of other things. Um, so the tips and tricks section did say that the brand of cocoa powder does make a difference. Um, of course, they're recommending their own brand, the very expensive one. I am gonna go ahead and use my Aldi cheap stuff because I put it in pancakes without any additional sugar over the weekend and it was just fine. A little bit of espresso powder is going to really boost that chocolate flavor without the bitterness. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, what's next? You're going to measure everything very carefully. Because we're using cocoa powder and because we're using powdered sugar, both of those things tend to go floof. So again, this is a this is a point in the recipe where your food scale and measuring your ingredients is going to lend your recipe more success than if you're just using um, measuring cups and spoons. So let's see what else. Right. They recommend whisking your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients separately. That way you can get all of your sugars incorporated. And when you're mixing your sugars, you're whisking your sugars. Again, because we're dealing with a consistency that's very loose and fluffy, be very careful, go very slowly. The opposite can be said for when you're whisking your egg whites. Go ahead and whisk those egg whites. Um, you're gonna break them down. That's gonna make them easier to be mixed with your dry ingredients. So two separate bowls for wet and dry ingredients, okay? Um, let's see here. Make sure that when you are combining the two, you are getting every single last bit of liquid ingredient out of the bowl. Or what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna put my dry ingredients into my wet ingredients. That way I don't have to worry about it. Again though, do this slowly because it's gonna go floof. <laughs> um, stir everything until it is combined. Very, very, very combined. Now, in the beginning, you may wanna start off with a spatula and just do some folding because again, powdered sugar, cocoa powder, floof. So go very slowly in the beginning. Then once your dry ingredients are settling and less likely to uh, cloud up in your face, then you can get a little more crazy with it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna use my mixer today. I think I'm just gonna do this by hand. So um, you're going to want to really, really mix. Don't panic because for the longest time, you're going to think that you don't have enough liquid. I'm trying not to yawn, I'm so sorry. Um, you're gonna think you don't have enough liquid in your mix. Within a couple, about the time you start to panic, keep going, that's about the time that the mixture turns, okay? Um, let's see here. Your mixture should be very syrupy, okay? It's not gonna be stiff. You want to keep mixing until it's very syrupy. We will get to that part. Um, oh, right. So we're gonna be making cookies. You're gonna have your cookie sheet. You know I like to use the parchment with mine. If you use parchment, you still need to grease your parchment. You're gonna need to grease everything very, very well because this is a very sticky batter. It's a very wet cookie. 
they don't like to come off of the cookie pan or your parchment paper. I am still going to use parchment paper, but I'm going to use my spray uh, on top of the parchment paper, which you know, several of our recipes have called for and I've been like, it's fine. I'm not taking the chance with these cookies. <laughs> okay. Um, smaller cookies are easier to handle than larger cookies. So I am going to go with the slightly smaller ones. Teaspoon size is what I'm going to, my cookie scoop that I'm going to use. Um, now, the only exception to that is if you are adding nuts or fruits of any kind, which is an option for this recipe. I'm not, you know how I feel about fruit in a cookie. That's just weird. And we're a nut free household. So, um, that's not going to be used, <laughs> but if you do use them, your cookies are going to be a lot easier to scrape off a pan. <sighs> I'm so sorry. <sighs> oh, okay. The other thing that they recommend, and I guess you don't have to do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Once you scoop your cookies on the pan, walk away for 30 minutes. Let them sit on the pan outside of the oven for 30 minutes. They will have um, probably spread a little bit and developed kind of a, a shiny crust almost. That is, um, you'll be able to gently poke it without it sticking to your finger that is supposed to be ideal. Now your cookie is going to be, I don't know. Oh, when you bake them without resting them, they're going to be more fragile than if you let them sit for 30 minutes. So that's another thing I'm going to do. Um, bake the cookies for the recommended amount of time. They're not going to see done for smaller cookies seven minutes for larger cookies, 10 minutes. Um, it's, it's a wet cookie. Okay, guys, like it's a wet cookie. It's not going to seem baked. You're going to pull it out, set the tray somewhere and let those rest. They're going to don't firm them up in the oven. You're going to burn them. Let them finish cooking on the counter. Cookies do that. I don't know if you're aware of that, but I tend to under bake my chocolate chip cookies because I like a nice soft cookie. Um, so they'll finish baking on the counter. Okay. Now that we've gone over the tiny itty bitty things that could make or break this cookie, let's get going. I apologize for any pitiful meowing that you may hear because it is early in the morning and I am in the kitchen. The tuxedo cat thinks that it's feeding time for him for his special breakfast that he gets. And he is very upset that it is not actually time for his special breakfast. Okay. I'm going to start by measuring my dry ingredients. We've got our kitchen scale, the bowl I'm going to use for the dry ingredients. I'm going to use the big bowl for the wet ingredients because that's also where I'm going to do my mixing. Make sure it is set to grams and we need 255 grams of powdered sugar. It's, um, two and one fourth cups. So I'm almost there. What did I say? 255, got a little bit more to go. Five more. Okay, that is a little much and normally I would be like, oh, it's fine. It is not fine. <laughs> we are not, we are not playing with this. So spoon retrieval method, I just need to remove three grams. Try to put it back in here without making a huge mess. Oh, so close. One gram left. There we go. 255. Okay. I'm going to set that over here and cocoa powder. Hi tail. <laughs> um, I'm going to hit my button to clear out that so that I can start new. So I don't have to do the math. One cup of unsweetened cocoa powder or 85 on this. So I may have to break out my other cocoa powder. This one is running awful low, which makes me sad. I mean, like the other stuff is name brand, you know, Hershey's, it's a giant container of it, but this Aldi brand has been pretty good. Okay. 
The funny thing about cocoa powder is that it has practically no weight to it. It's, I dare say it's almost lighter than, um, than the powdered sugar. So, all right, your one teaspoon of espresso powder. God, I love this stuff. Yep. I added it to chocolate pancakes over the weekend and <laughs> we were all obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. How much salt? Uh, one fourth a tea teaspoon of salt. Hang on a minute. These cats and their tails, somebody is going to get hurt. There we go. Fourth a teaspoon of salt. Okay. That should be all of my dry ingredients. Yes. I'm going to set this aside and whisk those in a little bit. Time to switch up and get the wet ingredients done. We've done our dry ingredients. It's time for the wet ingredients. And since there's only two wet ingredients, this should be easy. In theory, I hate separating eggs. Honestly, I should have gotten an egg separator by now because I just hate it. And there's the, you know, the water bottle trick and this is going to get messy. Okay. <laughs> so we need three large egg whites or 106 is our number for the scale here. I'm just going to not drop the egg off the counter. <laughs> that was close. So as many years as I have been baking and you know, I'm just going to get in here with my hand. One thing I have never learned to do is uh, crack an egg with one hand. So that's fun. There's a little bit of egg white left in here. Every little bit is going to count. Oh, this is so gross. Um, that egg split really weird. I prefer to separate egg yolks just in my hand. I find it leaves a little bit less. Um, so make sure your hands are clean if you're doing it this way. Oh my gosh, this is such a mess. I'm up to 60. So I don't think that these were like extra large eggs by any means. So I may have to, yeah, I'm going to have to get a fourth egg and that should, so I'm really only going to need a little bit because I'm at 91 right now, but you're going to need all the liquid you can get. So let me grab another egg real fast here. Obviously we're having omelets for breakfast this morning. That got all over the place. Trying to only let a little bit in. <laughs> what did I say? 106. I'm at 102 right now. 103. 104, 105. A little bit more. <laughs> So close. There we go. 106. Okay. Whoo. That was stressful for me. And now I have to wash my hands because gross. Okay. Um, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I guess we're not measuring. We're not weighing that. We're just measuring it. So. This is a half teaspoon. So I'm going to have to do this four times. Obviously real vanilla is better, but with the cost of real vanilla these days, I need to just start making my own. I had a friend reach out about that. Um, if you're adding chocolate chips or anything, you're going to add that later. You know what? I might add a few chocolate chips. Maybe I'll add some to like a second batch and then that way we can have some chocolate chips and some without. Okay. Uh, now we're going to very gently 
whisk the dry ingredients. Very, very gently. Um, very gently whisking our dry ingredients. See the poof? And then a little bit more vigorously here. Gonna break down those eggs, get that vanilla incorporated. So you're not, you're not whisking this for meringue, okay? Don't get too crazy with it. Just, mine's just gonna end up being a little frothy here. I'm just gonna add a little bit in here and gently mix. As you can see, I'm, it's, uh, it's smoky. It's good tasting air, honestly. This is an interesting process, I will, I will say that. Um, you know what? I lack the patience it takes to deal with this. Woo! Flavored air. Flavored air is the best kind of air. All right, you're gonna mix, and you're gonna mix, and you're gonna mix. And if you used a mixer, more power to you. I am regretting that decision right now, but it is too late to back out. So mix and mix and mix until it's a syrupy consistency, and we'll come back and review what comes next after, after I'm done with the mixing. They weren't kidding. About the time I started to panic and glancing at the recipe, trying to figure out what I missed or what I did wrong is about the time that the powdered sugar finally broke down. And now I definitely have a syrupy consistency in here. Um, you know, I feel like I still have a few small lumps and maybe if I had, um, oh, you know, sifted everything, I wouldn't have that but I don't think it's gonna be a bother either. So this is a very <laughs> syrupy consistency, as advertised. Um, I do wanna make sure I try to get, it's, it's gonna be a sticky mess to get on our cookie sheets. So let me clean up and prepare cookie sheets and I'll see you back. I decided to go ahead and add some chocolate chips just because I would like some more stability in my life. So um, I know it says you can do like two cups. I'm starting with a half a cup of semi-sweet and working that in and seeing what that looks like in these cookies. Honestly, I think that almost looks like enough for me. Um, yeah, that's, I'll, that was just a half a cup. I'll add just a little, maybe a fourth of a cup there. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. These over here. Now, I'm gonna do some experimentation because I've got some peanut butter M&Ms and of course some Halloween sprinkles for the kiddo. Here we go. Let me move some things around here. Now, I did heavily spray my parchment paper and I'm using my small cookie scoop here. It is syrupy and sticky, yes. And if you'll notice, we have not turned on the oven yet. That's okay. Um, we, can, we can preheat our oven while our cookie dough is resting. Now, I'm not sure how much these are going to spread out, so I am taking it easy here. I think, you know, I mean, I have a small oven, 
So half sheet, I do miss my large oven at the old house. I could fit so many full sheets in that thing. It was fantastic. Um, but now I have two ovens, so I guess, I guess really it all evens out. I do notice that the more chocolate chips there are in a scoop of batter, the less it's spreading. So that is something to keep in mind. So I will be able to fit eight on here. And for this first batch, I'm gonna leave these alone as is. I'm gonna set these over here, grab my next tray. Okay, next tray. And the yield on this recipe really does depend on what all you're putting in and how big you're making these. It varies so, so much. Oh gosh. This is not my favorite cookie dough to work with. I will, I will say that now, but it's not terrible. I know that the kiddo will be very pleased with Halloween cookies if these turn out. This is a recipe that he picked out. I did not, I did not pick this recipe for the simple fact that anything flourless usually means that it's got almond flour, um, which I cannot stand. And I, if it doesn't have almond flour, then chances are it's kind of a pain to work with. And I am a lazy baker. Okay. Uh, great, I just got stuff all over the scoop. That's gonna be fun. My Halloween, I hate these spin tops from Wilton. I love Wilton, but these spin tops are absolutely the worst thing. This thing broke the second that I opened it, so now it's just a free-for-all as to whatever it is you're gonna get. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dump sprinkles on here. You can't turn it without the whole, see, that, that's not even what was open. But that's what you get, I guess. Um, <laughs> I guess I could cover that side. See, you just get a mix of everything. Just a mix. It's an absolute mess. Got some ghosts here. Some purple, some orange, a little bit of green. Okay, I will be so happy when these are gone. I think I'm just gonna buy ice cream so that the kiddo can have ice cream with sprinkles. Set this aside and on to the last tray. Now, this is not a cookie recipe that I seem, I don't wanna put my hand on that. Oh, it did it again. You've gotta be kidding me. Yep. <laughs> this is not a cookie recipe that I can see myself really like making for um, for holiday cookie day. It's tricky to work with. Um, and I may change my mind on that based on the outcome. Like if these end up being ridiculously delicious, then I may change my mind. Whoa. Parchment paper gone. That is going to be a strange looking cookie. But I want to fit as much on here as I can because I'm not, <laughs> not going to do another tray of these. And honestly, I don't think there's enough dough left to. I hesitate at calling it the dough. It's really, it is really the strangest, um, Strangest consistency cookie I think I've ever attempted to bake. It smells good though. 
I guess I'm only going to get four on here and then everything else is done. I feel like that needs just whatever else I can scrape out of here. <laughs> All right. Now for these, I'm just going to pop a peanut butter M&M right in the middle. Just one. See what happens. I'm really playing fast and loose with directions and recipes, even though I swore. I'm going to put a green one in the middle. Even though I swore to myself I was going to be good and do this recipe exactly as it is supposed to be done, uh, I changed my mind. Okay. Start your oven. You're going to be heating it up to 350 degrees. Set a 30 minute timer. Okay, 30 minutes. When that 30 minutes is up, then you can pop these cookies in. Seven minutes for smaller cookies, eight to nine minutes for larger cookies. Larger cookies with um, chocolate chips or nuts or fruits or whatever you've added, those can be up to 10 minutes. They're not going to seem like they're all the way done. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, when you take them out of the oven, do not try to take them off of these cookie sheets. You're going to leave them on the cookie sheets until they're practically cool. Just before they're completely cool, you're going to slide a very thin spatula, if you have one, um, underneath the cookie to loosen it from the paper. I have this one from Ikea. This thing is paper thin and I love it. This is my favorite spatula for cookies. So 30 minutes of resting while your oven heats up in for seven to 10 minutes, rest them, uh, cool them on the trays. I'll see you back. I know it's hard to tell, but the bottom edge lifted up a little bit. That's how I am going to assume that they are done. So when that bottom edge lifts up, otherwise they look almost just like they looked when I put them in the oven. These cookies are a little strange. Um, they look almost just like they looked when I put them in the oven, except that the bottom edges curved up just a little. So um, these are completely cool. They are still very delicate and bendy cookies. Like they don't seem like they're done, but when I turn it over and I look at the bottom, I can tell it's, it's like the outer edge of a pancake. And there we go, it is done inside. Now's the moment of truth. Some people hated this recipe, said it was bitter, said it just didn't have good flavor. Some people said it was the best cookie that they ever ate, so. I just went through something. Um, wow. Okay. Um, I'm going to try that again. What happened? This cookie literally melts inside. Like there's no chewing. It just melts inside your mouth. It's not, I know it's because of the powdered sugar. Like I, my brain recognizes this fact. It's got a really intense chocolate flavor. Um, I did add the bittersweet or not bittersweet, the semi-sweet chocolate chips. Um, if you are looking for an overly sweet cookie, this is not going to be it. Um, if you're looking for a chocolate explosion and semi-sweet or kind of a bittersweet chocolate is what you're into, this is, this is going to be for you. Is it messy to eat? It's a weird consistency. It, cause it breaks down in your mouth. It's just, I, I don't know how to describe this other than, uh, strange and different and um, definitely chocolatey. I can see myself maybe eating just one of these and then being done for a while because this is a lot of chocolate. Well, that is it for week number 42. I hope that you had the opportunity to try this very 
strange um, cookie. I just, I'm still on the fence about how I feel about it. Like the flavor's good, that texture and, and the weird, weird thing that happens after you take a bite is so strange. Um, but anyway, I hope you get the chance to try this because it is definitely an experience. I hope that you hit the subscribe button below because we have one of these new recipes every single week. Next week is Halloween, woohoo, Halloween theme, so that's exciting. Um, also, you can head over to the Facebook page because every Wednesday, Thursday morning, I'm gonna post the ingredient list and the name of what we're gonna be baking. That way you can decide if you would like to bake along because it's my challenge, doesn't mean it has to be your challenge as well. I'm going to go clean up the kitchen. It's a disaster. Think more about these cookies that are very strange and I will see you next weekend. Mm -hmm.